Hello and welcome, welcome to our third video, uh, which is all in the title, all going to be about CVs uh, and cover letters. Um, now, if you haven't already, uh, I'd strongly recommend uh, that you watch uh, the previous two videos in the series. Um, the first one was all about, you know, the lockdown and setting structure uh, and about working from home. Now, hopefully, um, if as a result of this or as a result of this video, you are going to sort of nail yourself uh, an interview or have a conversation uh, with somebody uh, about perhaps some work experience or some internships. So I feel the previous two videos uh, will help you out uh, because they talk uh, about how to structure uh, your day, how to plan your day, uh, simple things like setting your environment, getting that correct, um, and also the current employment and job landscape at the moment. So I spoke about that in the previous two videos. Um, now this one is going to be a more nuts and bolts hands-on video all about CVs and cover letters. Um, it says it on the gym. Uh, CVs and cover letters, that's what it's all going to be about today. Um, so in case you haven't watched your other videos, uh, so my name is Shane, uh, my first name is Shane, and my surname is Franklin, uh, and I'm the founder and lead trainer uh, for an organization called Seagarn Training. Uh, and in a nutshell, we go up and down the country uh, delivering training for young people between the ages of seven to uh, 25 years old. So anywhere you can imagine a young person would be between that age, uh, we will work with them. Uh, so we do a lot of work around CVs and covering letters, um, also about you know starting a business uh, and also uh, around entering the job market. So so we're really, really passionate um, about young people entering the job market and connecting them into the world of work. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video, as I have with other videos, um, is I would encourage you to pause the video. OK, so I'm going to set you some tasks throughout. Uh, the video, but I'd really encourage you to just stop it at certain points, okay, and do the exercises, um, because I think, you know, if I just talk to you or you watch it for 30 minutes, it may be useful to you, uh, but I think the real benefit is going to come if you stop it and actually do the actual exercises and come back and revisit it, okay, so I'd advise you to stop it. Um, as I said, a recommendation about my, a uh, little background about myself, lots of different work I do with young people between the ages of seven. 25 years old at uh, schools colleges uh, people referral units uh, universities and we do so much work youth groups local authorities lots of work with uh, young people uh, I'm actually here working from home today as a lot of people are uh, this is filmed in January uh, 21 uh, so obviously some restrictions are in place, so I'm converting a session that I do face to face um, where I'm going to do it online for you today. So who are who are we? Uh, we are passionate about developing uh, people and nurturing tomorrow's leaders. So we believe that young people, um, you guys are the future. OK, so you are the workforce um, that are going to be going into companies and innovating and creating um, and creating products and services that are going to make an impact um, you know, in the world in which we live. So we do this by delivering uh, learning and development training programs, so workshops and online sessions. Um, but the primary aim is to equip people with the skills needed uh, for the modern world of work. So those are a few pictures uh, which seem a long time ago now, weren't too long ago, but those are pictures that were taken um, in a number of my uh, sessions that we do with young people. Um, so the first question that I have. Uh, now, please, if you haven't, go quickly, go and grab yourself a pen and paper. OK, uh, so grab yourself a pen and paper. And the first thing that I want you to write down is what are the key points that you want to demonstrate on your CV? So what are the key points that you want to demonstrate on your CV? So pause the video and write that down. OK, so hopefully, um, as I said, I recommend you pause it, uh, that you've paused the video and you've written them down. So basic information you want to get on there is obviously your name. So your full uh, first name. Uh, you want to get an email address. Now, guys, I cannot help but stress this enough. And I say this to young people uh, a lot. OK, so 
keep it simple okay get a good reputable email address okay um that employers want to see okay so the email address that is you know i've seen all different types of email addresses that i'm not going to go into now okay but just your first and your second name if that isn't available uh, on google mail or whatever email system you're using just you know, underscore one or one, two, three, whatever it is. So um, obviously my name is Shane Franklin. If that wasn't available, uh, I would use Shane Franklin underscore one. It's highly likely that's going to be available uh, on Gmail. Okay, so your first name and your second name um, is on your um, on your CV with a good email address. Okay, uh, you then want to have your contact details on there. Uh, so you then want to have your phone number on there. Your address is optional. You don't have to put your address if you don't want to some people say yes some people say no uh, it's entirely your choice uh, so you know you, the contact detail is your first name your uh, phone number and also your email address really really important then at the top i'd really recommend that you just have a couple of sentences introducing who you are okay who you are you know your key skills okay your passion and your passions and your interests okay just literally a couple of lines introducing the cv um, and there are different types of cvs okay but you may be uh, may not have loads of work experience at the moment so what i'd recommend um, is to have your key skills okay so maybe five or six different bullet points you can have on there about some of the things that you've achieved so for example if you've got a dance for example, award, you've got any musical instruments, any grades you've passed, anything you've done from school, something to bring alive your CV. OK, put that down um, and then any work experience that you have also put that down. If you don't have any professional work experience, OK, you can start to think about bringing in any experience at school so was you the captain of your football team for example okay was you um i can't think of the word now but uh was you you know any extra activities you did at school put those down on your cv okay really really important okay so i want to go through a couple of um, examples now okay to show you so the first one, Jane Franklin, I do not know Jane Franklin, she's not related to me, so please do not worry. Uh, very simple, so at the top uh, we can see her name, uh, we can see what she does, uh, we've got the address on there. So this is an American one, but I quite like the layout of this. Uh, now she's put her LinkedIn and her Twitter account on there. You can put your social media handles on there, but I'd recommend if you do put it on there, that it's only things that are professional. So if you've been tweeting about things that are not professional and not re relevant, I wouldn't recommend putting them on there. On that note, um, before you start to send out your CV, I always say to young people just to have a little social media cleanse uh, because employers, they will look you up. They will Google your name. Uh, and there has been horror stories and incidents of people uh, tweeting, getting jobs, young people um, in there after they graduate. And then, you know, they've lost the job, you know, quite a high profile one a few years ago or the offer has been withdrawn because they have found out something or a tweet that they did 10 years ago. So, you know, guys, what you put out on the social platform, it is there. OK, but please, you know, if it's not professional, take it out. Um, so we've got a little uh, introduction. As I said, this person here has got three uh, lines down there okay a little um, personal profile and then gone into their education underneath it okay very short very snappy um, I particularly like the layout of this I particularly like the layout of this okay so she's got a professional appointments under there okay and if you notice guys it is very very punchy okay so they're not going into great detail okay very very punchy and easy to read out because unfortunately particularly in this day and age Age, recruiters are going to get hundreds if not thousands of CVs okay so if it's all uh, not formatted right and there's loads of writing on there quite simply they're not going to read it uh, so another one uh, CV here which is a little bit different uh, excuse the formatting uh, 
But what I particularly like is, again, it's the layout. So if we look on the left hand side, we've got a summary. OK, so just I've got three or four sentences down there. And what I like, which is quite different about this one, is they put a few highlights down there. So they put analytical, research um, orientated, tech savvy, OK, creative and good business sense. Now, for young people, uh, you, as I said before, you may not have a whole wealth of experience okay but i bet if i spoke to you individually i bet you would be some creative skills somewhere in school or college you've demonstrated i would put my money on that you're all tech savvy in some particular way okay so maybe put some highlights down on there uh, what they've also put um, is their experience okay so the dates so you put at the top your most recent and at the bottom okay that was uh, quite a while ago so you know your your least recent if that makes sense okay and then you then the company you work for and then the job title and literally just a few bullet points okay in terms of what you've done so for example this one has put create innovative new software systems for medical use and that was in bath england i I personally don't think in this day and age you need to add this information in here because you know they can look up the company and they'll know whereabouts they're based so I don't think you really need to put down the location of where the company is based uh, and underneath it they've then got their education now what you can do okay if you feel you know cvs at the maximum they can be would be two pages you don't want any longer than two pages um, even for someone with a whole wealth of experience you don't want to go over two pages but if uh, like in this example here you know you don't have loads of experience down you can cut out so you can for example you know if you've only got one work experience here you can bring your education up okay and maybe put down the grades that you've got okay maybe put down something that's relevant you know a, a course that you've taken or something around your education that is linked to the job okay so you may not have too much work experience but you can still do a summary two or three pages, you can still put down the key highlights of skills that you've actually got. Uh, if you've got maybe one job or, you know, if you haven't got any jobs, just straight away, okay, I still would put the experience down, put, you know, some leadership position or, you know, Duke of Edinburgh award or anything that you've done, still put that down the experience, but perhaps bring the education up a little bit and just detail your qualifications um, and your GCSEs or your SATs or any sort of um, things you've done and school, put that underneath it. Um, so another one, which is slightly different. So we can see there's no, you know, definitive way. All three of these look very, very different. Okay. But what I would say is that all three of them are laid out and they're easy to read. Uh, now with this one, I find this one a little bit too wordy for me. Okay, because so this is quite a big paragraph that um, they've got here. Um, they I like how they've listed their accomplishments. Okay, so for example, we start at the top. They've got obviously their phone number, their email address, their name. Uh, they've got what field they're in, a quick personal statement at the top. Um, I personally would keep this shorter. Okay, it's a lot of words up there. Then they've got their work experience directly underneath. Excuse me for drinking lots of water uh, whilst we're doing this. Uh, it gets good, my mouth gets dry while doing it. So uh, they've put fear engineer. They've listed all of their qualifications down. Uh, sorry, they've listed their experience down and also their accomplishments underneath it. OK, um, and again, I personally would cut down this information here. OK, and they put one um, accomplishment underneath it. But I think this one is quite well laid out. Personal statement, work experience and education. OK, now, guys, what I would say to you is your CV is oh there we go you're back again like that. so 
what I would say to you is it is very much um, an individual. Your CV is an individual thing, okay? There's certain, as I said to you, information that you want to have down on that CV, okay? But it is your document and it is there to sell, okay? You and your skills and your experience, okay? Um, now, you may have different CVs uh, for different uh, roles. So, for example, um, if you're going for an admin role, uh, I would suggest that you would... Uh, obviously stress your experience about working in admin okay but if you're going for a more retail or customer service role you want to stress your experience in that particular area so what i would say is have a generic cv that you can send to people however if you know uh, one is more admin based you may want to tweak it a little bit to get more of that admin information in there Okay, but there's no sort of, uh, well, there are some right or wrongs in doing it. Um, the right or wrong would be to, the wrong would be to waffle uh, too much, get too much information in there and have it too wordy. The right would be to keep it short, punchy um, and to the point. Okay, so what we're going to do now is have a quick look at the, uh, we've looked at CVs. Okay, so I've shown you three different examples uh, of CVs, okay, and different layouts that you can do. Now, there are loads of information online uh, where you can get information about CVs and some samples. If you don't know where to start, okay, you can get some great information online about how to build a CV, okay? And um, so the next uh, question that I've got for you, and again, please pause the video. What are the key points you want to demonstrate on your cover letter? So lots of the time, employers will ask for a CV and a cover letter. Uh, so please pause the video, okay? Pause the video and I want you to write down what are the key points you want to demonstrate on your cover letter? Brilliant. So hopefully you've got that down. So cover letters are slightly different. OK, so cover letters, um, I believe, should always be tailored to that individual company. OK, again, uh, you want to keep it to one page or absolutely max two page. OK, because at this stage um, of your career, you recruiters, you know, companies and they'll be getting thousands of CVs and cover letters. So it's important just to keep it short, and snappy and to the point. So what are the key points you want to get? Uh, so here's an example. Uh, so obviously you've got your name and address at the top right, uh, your email address and your phone number. Take note that this person's email address, although it is a mock up, they put down V Smith. OK, very simple. Smith V Smith at Hotmail. They've then got their phone number. They've got the date uh, and then they've then got, uh, you know, the person. Uh, you may not have a person who you are addressing it to individually, uh, but, you know, I think it's important to put the company down on there. Uh, so they put dear X, uh, the reference number. Now, lots of the time, the, the job that is posted, okay, they have a reference number. So I'd recommend putting that reference down number down on there. Uh, they're writing with regard to the position advertised on the student shop website. They said they've enclosed a copy of their CV. Uh, grateful if you consider my application. And, and then they're going straight into what they're doing. So they're studying journalism at university, looking for part-term role to fit in with their studies, interested in the position, and they enjoy working with people and have previous experience of working in a customer service role. Now, for me, this would be key, okay? So you can enjoy working with people, that's fantastic, but here, okay, it highlights that they've got experience of working with people, okay? It also says they've got their numerate, I've got computer literate, they're computer literate, and they're able to learn and adapt to quickly to new skills. Now, this is what I was saying previously, okay? In a sense that if, OK, lots of the times, OK, companies on the job posting, they will put down and they will say, these are the skills that we're looking for. So really, really important, guys, put down the skills that they're looking for. If you've got them, if you haven't got them, don't lie. Be completely honest. And I should have mentioned that earlier. Please, please, please. The one of the mentioned do's and don'ts. One of the don'ts of CVs is don't lie. OK, if you've got a B. Or if you've got a D in maths, 
don't put down a B because a lot of the times they will look into it and they will check it. And if they don't, when you say you've got skills in a particular area, eventually you will be found out. OK, and you don't want to be found out uh, later on down the line. OK, so please, please, please be honest. So what I would say is what I like about this example is they've put down, OK, their highlighted key skills okay um they are aware that their largest retail outlets in lincoln and i am keen to uh, to work for fashion retail ex with exciting range of clothes for all age groups thank you for your application and uh, they would love to discuss it further okay what i would like to see is maybe in a little electronic sig uh, signature or something we could sort of put in there just to bring it up a little bit but i think that's a great uh, to the point um cover letter so there's one example here's another one that's a little bit more wordy okay a little bit more wordy okay but what i do and reason why i put in it this in there is they've said straight away they are a long-term admirer of the impressive work by the team at mayflower technologies okay really really good guys you've got to show an interest and passion for the company that you're working for you want them to think that you that company is the only company that you know you've dreamed of working for for years so it's really important and uh, they put down their former student and their responsibilities in there as well okay so really important they put down their responsibilities what i love also is they've also put down some numbers so they helped improve our ticket response time by 12 percent okay a really really good example about putting some numbers down on there they've also mentioned they've attached their resume or their cvs american version version with their skills and education uh, nice sign off uh, with their name okay so really really simple and another great example okay. uh, the final one which i'd like to show to you is was this one looks a little bit different okay but um what i like that they've done in this one is they've actually so this is uh, sort of one working in the uh, in a restaurant they've put down specifics so i'm looking at this and i can see menu planning and food preparation bam those are their experience kitchen operation bam those are their experience dining room management bam those are those experience so the top bit here and here, this is just going to be introductions. Okay, this is just going to be introductions. So it is going to vary. It is going to vary by person to person, CV to CV, cover letter to cover letter. Now, if it was me, okay, I would create a template, okay, but every single one, you can put the same thing, okay, but you would just obviously, this is Flora restaurant. This could be McDonald's restaurant, Burger King restaurant, whatever it is, okay, but just tailor some of the bits in there so it looks like it is actually made uh, and developed just for them. OK, now, guys, just along, like I said to you with CVs, OK, it's very, very, very important that you tailor it. So it's very, very important that you tailor it. OK, so um, there's going to be, um, you know, you could send out maybe 10 or 20 or 30, 40 or 50 different cover letters. OK, but the format is going to be the same, uh, but there's going to be a few different tweaks in there as to who you're actually uh, sending it to. So just to summarise, uh, we have gone through the key points. So I hope you've got down the key points that you want to demonstrate on your CV. OK, so you've got that down. I've given you some examples here as well. OK, you can have a look at these. OK, and maybe, uh, you know, uh, sort of imitate them in terms of the layout um, of there. Pick which one works for you. I think if you don't have a wealth of experience at this stage, I probably would go for this one, uh, which is uh, highlighting a summary key highlights uh, you can as i say bring the education part up front or a bit higher and put down your education okay so that's the one i would personally go with if i uh, didn't have too much exp experience we've also spoken about the key points you want to uh, demonstrate on your cover letter okay really really important uh, so we can put down there's a couple of examples there now what i would say to you is just to get it out there don't get paralysis through analysis get it out there okay put it forward okay and despite the current uh, challenges we're having with covid there are jobs out there okay there's lots of jobs out there okay you've just got to get that cv get that cover letter tweet and post it
thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned from it. I'll be doing another uh, video, which is all based around you guys, the lockdown and what we can be doing to be keeping mindful uh, and keeping some structure during these challenging times. Thank you.